Now that I'm used to the climate I think that if man ever found A place to live easy and happy That Eden is on Puget Sound Eden is on Puget Sound That Eden is on Puget Sound A place to live easy and happy that Eden is on Puget Sound. Hello, you are listening to The Seattle Files. My name is Chris Allen. I'm your host. On each episode of the show, I get together with a different local comedian, and together we discuss the strange, unusual, interesting, and oftentimes lesser-known aspects of our local history. Joining me today in the program is Emmett Montgomery. How's it going, Emmett? Hello. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> uh, Emmett is a stand-up comedian around town. Uh, he's been on Last Comic Standing. He has a monthly show at Annex Theater called Weird and Awesome with Emmett Montgomery. It's the first Sunday of every month. It's a variety show that highlights uh, different local acts and uh, variety shows. You it's want to kind of my, my love letter to Seattle. I think Seattle is uh, full of beautiful weirdos and just uh try to you've been on the show i have yeah yeah mm-hmm. so you know it's not it's i think when you say comedian with me you kind of have to air cro- quotes sometimes mm-hmm. cause sometimes i feel like a professional sad man <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know i think it's yeah it's 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 fun it's mm. People, we've been doing it for seven years, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a great show, and you never know what you're going to see when you yeah. go there. Either do I, because <laughs> I just kind of give people license to be themselves, just like my weird basement show, The Magic Hat, mm-hmm. that happens every Monday. Every uh, Monday at a rendezvous. Yeah, in the right? grotto of the rendezvous that used to be uh, a speakeasy a yeah. million years ago. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've ever done an episode about the history of that building, but not. I- yeah, I just stumbled upon uh, there were uh, uh, it was a, uh, there were gay burlesque shows that happened there in the 1950s, and uh, really makes me want to look more into that. But uh, I just found that I'll probably do an episode about that, oh, but cool. I haven't dived too deep into it yet. Cool. Uh, so, how long have you lived in the in the Seattle area? Uh, you know, 2002, mm-hmm. April 1st, 2002. I stepped uh, off a Greyhound bus with a bag of clothes and a bag of books, and I have been. Here ever since. I mean, I'm from Utah, Mm -hmm. but when I go back to Utah, I am definitely from Seattle, (laughs) you know. So this is, and I've seen, seen it change, you know, Mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, since 2000, oh yeah, absolutely, since 2002. How much do you know about local history? I, I think a little, uh, probably more than the average Seattle dweller. I was a security guard at the Fry Art Museum. Okay. So, you know, and, and spend a lot of time in First Hill. And I also like to walk down alleys because I like to see the fronts and backs of buildings, you yeah. know, and find out those are, look at the original, you know. The cobblestone designs. The cobblestones. And, yeah, and then, I hear you. You, know, you see the garages that were converted from horse stables and you see stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, so, but, you know, and a big fan of Spadell and his book, mm-hmm. you know, Sons of Prophet and. But, uh, you know, get casual. Just, okay. Just, you know, I just enjoy it. I'm not, you know. Don't know, don't, don't know a ton, but more, no more than the average person, yeah, probably. I feel, cool. I yeah, feel I hear that you. I, I kind of know enough of the story. And I know that this is a town founded by, you know, crooks and visionaries. And, Pretty much. Um, and there's still here today. To be, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Yeah. Cool. And you don't know what we're going to be talking about today, I, correct? I, I awesome. do not. So let's, so let's get started. Uh, the Pacific Ring of Fire is, is the name given to the massive volcanic activity that occurs around the rim of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, 75% of the world's volcanoes exist in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So 36 million years ago, uh, tension in the tectonic plate started pushing up mountains, uh, both tectonic tensions as well as volcanoes, and the Cascade Mountain Range is one such result of the tectonic activity. And the Cascade Range goes as a 700-mile stretch of mountains, about 150 miles inland, running parallel to the Pacific Ocean, from about British Columbia to Northern California. And of course, you know the Cascade Mountain Range. Yes, I, I grew up under its shadow. Yes. So. Uh, one such, such volcano that formed was a 9,677-foot glaciated mountain that was a near-perfect symmetrical cone. The natives of the Pacific Northwest called it Lawakloth or Lutla. 
And Lawaklaf means smoking mountain. It was called Smoking Mountain back in the day. Because it was a mountain that smoked. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, there was a legend that the mountain was the mother of two sons. Uh, the two sons being present day Mount Adams and Mount Hood. And the mountain was trying to make peace between them. So she would throw fire and rocks at them and shake the earth with anger. I think, yeah. I mean, as one of seven boys, uh, I see that as a very viable uh, parenting <laughs> technique between feuding brothers. Yeah. So. Did your mom ever throw rock and fire at you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she okay. continues to spew it to this day. All right. Does it work? Do you fall in the line? Uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> uh, 1792. George Vancouver sailed into the Pacific Northwest on the HMS Discovery. From his journal, we know the expedition, expedition encountered the volcano on May 19th, 1792. And he named the mountain after Elian Fitzherbert, the first Baron St. Helens, a British diplomat and a friend of Vancouver's, and the mountain was henceforth known as Mount St. Helens. Because he named everything he saw after himself and after his friends back home. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to, you know, go discover a place where people already are and mm -hmm. name things already with names, yeah. you might as well just be real generous about yep. it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the mountain experienced a small eruption in 1800, and then additional small eruptions occurred in 1831, 1835, and 1842. So it's really throwing, throwing those rocks in fire, yeah. trying to get the boys to calm down. Uh, painter Paul Kane, famous for his paintings of Native Americans, wrote in his journal on March 26, 1847, quote, When we arrived at the mouth of Catalpotal River, 26 miles from Fort Vancouver, I stopped to make a sketch of the volcano Mount St. Helens, distant, I suppose, about 30 to 40 miles. The mountain has never been visited by either whites or Indians. The latter assert that it is inhabited by a race of beings of a different species who are cannibals, and whom they hold in great dread. They also said there is a lake at its base with an ex a very extraordinary kind of fish in it, with a head more resembling that of a bear than any other animal. Yeah. Wow, that's real neat. That's a hell of a superstition. I, know. I hope it's real. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. No, nobody had been there before, and I don't know if anybody's gone since. <laughs> uh, these superstitions are taken from the statement of a man who was eaten by the skookums, as they were called. That's what this race of people were called. The skookums? The skookums, oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. They that, were is, that is fantastic. Evil beings, the skookums. The sk oh. <laughs> Calm down, kids. The skookums will get you. Yeah. Ah. Don't go. Don't go near that mountain, or the skookums will eat you. Yes. Oh man, skookums. Why isn't the Why is it the Mariners? Why isn't the Seattle? Oh, the Seattle the skookums. skookums? Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. You can just some horrifying. Just the the mascot should could just be a dude with a beard, just with. <laughs> Yeah, you know, bits of blood and meat in it. Yeah, the bloody beard holding a human foot yeah. in his hand and hitting Skookums. baseballs yeah. with a human leg. Skookums. Oh, that would be awesome. If you're listening, Mariners people, <laughs> get on I think this. Well, or if you know, if we do get one of those stadiums that we're supposedly going to get or arena, mm -hmm. you know, get a basketball team. Oh, the Skookums. The yeah, because they're giants too. Yeah, yeah we could so get the, the yeah. Seattle Skookums. And if you don't want to have, like, Bloodbeard as your mascot, which, great mm -hmm. name, um, you could have, have, to keep with kind of our Puget Sound theme, you could have just the bear-headed fish. The bear, it's, yes. It's, it's the little... Yes. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're on to something here. Oh, man. Uh, he continued, quote, I offered a considerable bribe to any Indian who would accompany me in its exploration, but could not find one hardy enough to venture. They're terrified. Uh, the first ascent of Mount St. Helens was accomplished on August 26, 1853, by Thomas Dreyer and a team of climbers. Uh, in 1897, the area became part of Mount Rainier Forest Reserve, and in 1908, the boundaries were changed. It became part of the Columbia National Forest. Uh, in 1949, the Columbia National Forest was renamed Gifford Pinchot National Forest in honor of Gifford Pinchot, the first chief of the Forest Service who died in 1946. Which I did not know. I've been down there many times. But uh, yeah, this was named after Gifford Pinchot, who was the head of the Forest Service. Uh, in 1900, mining began, uh, mining began on the mountain for copper ore. Uh, 
and more small eruptions were reported in 1898, 1903, and 1921. Man, volcano miner must, that, I guess it's a job. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. That is that's a harrowing. Like go go mine in this yeah, mountain. You're just gonna yeah. I mean it's full of fire, and there might be cannibal people, <laughs> but never mind. Just but just go. There's copper there, so it's gotta a get the copper. Up. Gotta make those pennies. That's right. Yeah. Uh, there was no significant geological activity on the mountain for another seventy nine years. Until March 20th. No skookums, huh? No skookum. Yeah, they never found skookums. Well, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe they came and uh, they walk among us. Maybe. Oh, they intermarried with the, the, yeah. the, the, the and now there's skookums walking around. Yeah, okay. If you, if you are a skookum, email me at the <laughs> Seattle Files at gmail.com. I would love to hear your story, any skookums out there. <laughs> Uh, March 20th, 1980, at 3.47 p.m., a minor 4.1 earthquake shook the ground at Mount St. Helens. Forester Jeff Starnes was at a ranger station about 20 miles away and later said, quote, I didn't feel anything myself, and no one here said anything about it. Uh, small earthquakes like this are common in the Northwest. About three minor quakes a day happen on average, but are too small to be felt by people. A few weeks ago, we had... Uh... Did you see all the, the, the all the tweet activity about? Apparently, we had barely like three or four barely noticeable earthquakes in uh, in just over a period of two days. No, I didn't. I didn't hear yeah, about that. Like a few people could feel it down, like in Bainbridge and Burien, and it was like, oh, it was just. And then it was like, oh, wow! And I looked. I went on the seismic activity site, and. It has a, like, two date, like, this year, and it was something like 700 earthquakes this year. I'm like, oh. Yeah, but they're so small. It's so crazy that that yeah. happens. Back in Utah, I mean, that was the, we were, well, we were pay, preparing for a lot of stuff, you know, Jesus coming back, all that stuff. But um, super quake, because we were right on the, the fault line. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know Utah was on a plate, yeah. or on a, on a fault. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. they fault right up in the mountains, and... And uh, my hometown of Orem, though, is situated on a gravel bed. And uh, there was a lot of earthquake but paranoia, but they're like, oh, you're, we're just on a giant shock absorber. So, oh, so it's safer then. It's yeah, not so interesting. We'll, we'll be okay, but like uh, Provo, uh, like like all the rich people uh, live on the fra- fla- fault line. So there's oh, those, beautiful, yeah. those beautiful mansions will crumble. Yeah, kind of like when uh, in Magnolia, all the mansions up on the hillsides yeah, when the mudslides yeah, started no, happening. No, yeah, it will be, it will be, uh, it will be a sight. Uh, March twenty second at three thirty p.m., another quake happened. This one a four point three and a three point seven five on the twenty third. The mountain uh, then began experiencing quakes of about three point zero and lower every few minutes. Oh boy! Yeah, there like was contractions. Is yeah, that exactly. Uh oh, mama's a... mama's gonna. <laughs> You're gonna have another brother, <laughs> yeah. a lava brother. What? Kind of where mountains come from. Kind of. Uh, there was concern for eruption, but a much larger concern was that the small quakes would trigger avalanches and rock slides, and the Park Service warned people against going up the mountain. Gifford Pinchot National uh, Forest spokesman Jim Unter, Un, uh, Unter Wegner said, quote, We don't know what's going to happen. We're just trying to caution people against going into that area. We're not, we don't know what's going to happen with this active volcano. Well, we don't know. <laughs> they're, they're all active volcanoes. Yes. Like Mount Rainier is an active volcano. Yeah, there's not really yeah. an inactive yeah. volcano, is there? But uh, non-practicing volcano. Well, frequent earthquakes can be a sign that a mountain is about to erupt, but it's not a guarantee. Um, so it could just be a bunch of earthquakes happening. Yeah. So they didn't know. Uh, seismologists came to the mountain to keep an eye on the situation, but no plans were made to evacuate the ranger station on the south side of the mountain or any of the nearby lodges at Spirit Lake. So they're gonna they're gonna wait and see. Uh, Wednesday, March twenty sixth, the Forest Service closed the mountain to everyone above the timber line. There was still uncertainty as to whether the mountain would erupt or not, but the quakes had set off so many avalanches that the area was shut off. So they say nobody can go up there. On the north side of the mountain was the St. Helens Lodge, run by eighty three year old Harry Truman, not President Harry Truman, but just a guy named Harry Truman. He had owned the lodge for over 50 years when the quake started. 
Uh, he was a local character, known to be gregarious and good-natured, often drinking Shenley's whiskey, and he lived alone at the lodge with 16 cats. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, a, what an adorable character. He's great. He is the best. Yeah, it's with a, a, a guy I could really be friends with. Mm-hmm. Uh, advisory roadblocks were set up, and officials were entertaining the possibility of evacuation. Uh, Truman said, quote, I'm the only one up here. If the SOB blows, all they've got to do is find me. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay right here because I'll tell you why. My home and my fucking life's here. My wife and I, we both vowed years and years ago that we'd never leave Spirit Lake. We love it. It's part of me, and I'm part of that fucking mountain. Him and his cats drinking whiskey. Wonderful. Think you think the cats drank whiskey as well? <laughs> to, uh, I I like to think they did. Uh, uh, There's a beautiful image happening mm-hmm. of just the whiskey cat party. Just yeah, come on, mountain. Mm-hmm. I like to think that he had a little flask and he would pour a little bit of the flask into yeah. the cat's milk, there we go. and then yeah, yeah. and they just hang out yelling at the mountain yes, together. That's what you do every. Every morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, his wife had passed away a few years yeah. earlier. So they've been living together for, for most of their lives at Spirit Lake. Uh, Thursday, March 27th at 1236, Mount St. Helens shot out a plume of ash in a mighty explosion that could be felt for miles. The blow left a hole in the snow near the summit about 200 feet across and 100 feet deep. Wow. Yeah. A lot of power. Uh, most of the ash that was falling with most most of the ash was falling within about ten mi- a ten mile radius, but some had been collected at Mount Adams, thirty five miles away. Uh, March twenty eighth, twenty steam vents went up on the summit. A thirty foot wide mud flow that stretched a thousand feet ran down the side of the mountain. It's not erupted yet, but it's uh, a thousand feet. A thousand feet, yeah. Uh, at 3.45 a.m., an explosion sent ash 16,000 feet into the air. So it's, uh, it's cooking. Yeah, these, these, these numbers are so big, it's kind of hard to necessarily envision it. Yeah. It's but, yeah. pretty incomprehensible how much power is mm-hmm. in an actual active volcano like that. Uh, this was set to be the first eruption in the U.S. at Mount Lassen erupted in California in 19, 1917. Um, sightseers began flocking to the mountain to witness the eruption. Cowlitz County Sheriff Les Nelson became concerned about what would happen in the event of an act evacuation. He said, quote, One of our biggest problems could be the tourists. The citizens are up here are upset because if evacuation were necessary, there would be thousands of tourists blocking the road. Ordinarily, within a couple of hours lead time on evacuation, there would be no problem, but with 1,500 extra cars, that would be a real problem. So everybody's just jam packed, wanting to come see this well, thing. Who, who doesn't want to see <laughs> yeah. this catastrophic event? Yeah, just like you know, in the in the tsunamis, when that wire, you know, the recent the ones that were a few years ago, where when that the water kept on just receding, and it, everybody wanted to rush to see what was happening. Yeah. I mean, that's our human instinct. Because mm-hmm. we're explorers. I mean, you know, we, 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 we've we walked on the moon, but... We want to see the thing happening we, we want to see with our own happen. eyes. Yeah, which, you know, mm. works out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, not always. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we always assume we're going to be the ones it works yeah. out for, though, yeah. yeah. Uh, April 1st, ash could be seen coming down like snow 35 miles away. Yeah, that's always the the volcano imagery that that gets to me because snow, for the most part, is a is a is a kind of almost positive associated with Christmas. Yeah, it looks clean and it makes everything look pristine and, and quiet. The, uh, oh, this is this is death snow. <laughs> this is death snow. Think maybe how Pompeii was because you know they mm. don't have the realm of communication or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm sure they heard some stuff. But mm-hmm. like, oh, Christmas, yeah, because you know, it, well, <laughs> you know, your classic Pompeii Christmas, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but, pre-Christian in an area where there's no snow, yeah. Well, definitely. you know, you know my thoughts on Santa. I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> He's been around forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, April fourth. Uh, Governor Dixie Lee Ray declared a state of emergency and a roadblock was set up in a 20-mile radius around the mountain. Only those who lived or worked within the restricted uh, zone were allowed in it. Uh, Incidentally, April 4th, 1980, is my sister's birthday. 
And while all this was happening, uh, my mom was freaking the fuck out because what happens if the mountain erupts? What happens, you know, what if the wind is blowing to the north and we get stuck in the ash and snow? Oh, so and you're, what if we you're, can't? You're from here. I'm from here, so yeah. So you're, you're a Washington native. I am, yeah. So you could have some skookum in you. I could have some <laughs> skookum in me. <laughs> That's very true, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. What if I need to get a DNA test? <laughs> you do. Find out if I'm part I'm skookum. 7% skookum. Yeah, exactly. I need to connect to my skookum heritage. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, if uh, the skookums are still around, you could still have some skookum in you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, harmonic tremors were detected. Uh, they are earthquakes caused by lava swirling around just below the surface. The 1,500-foot crater started spewing out pieces of rock and ice 12 feet in diameter. Oh, oh man. To get hit with ice during a volcano? Ex- it, it, the, oh, irony. the irony. The irony. <laughs> <laughs> getting, uh, getting the cold burns yeah. along your side. How'd yeah. you go? Ice. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you died in the St. Helens eruption. I did, but you said ice. Shut up. <laughs> I have this conversation every day forever. <laughs> yeah. uh, 38 people were forced to leave their homes because they were too close to the mountain, and the concern now was that an eruption was imminent. News media flocked to the scene, and more and more tourists were showing up. The mountain seemed to be gearing up for a big eruption over the next few weeks, and the buildup was too much for people to resist. Uh, Harry Truman was beginning to become something of a media sensation. He refused to leave, and the press was turning him into an international celebrity. He said, quote, If I hadn't been here these past five or six weeks, you tell me, boys, what the media, press, and TV would have gotten out of Mount St. Helens. I'm the only one they have up here to talk to. They wouldn't have gotten anything that would have interested anybody except that goddamn old mountain. They'd have no... They, they uh, had no personal interest, and that's what means so much to the damn public. If you got a human being in the goddamn thing, drinking whiskey with his cats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's made his decision. But you think mm. about the cats. Yeah, that's true. Well, he's he's eighty three, so he's not going to like start over somewhere yeah. and rebuild. He's been there for fifty years. No, no. I, I mean, I think I think we all, if if there's one right. We have it as as Americans. It's to die a fiery death <laughs> yes. in a, in a, in a volcano. Yeah, that's true. Full that's, of whiskey. It's guaranteed by the goddamn yeah, constitution. constitution. It is. Uh, Truman joked that he would be fine in the eruption because he had a secret mine shaft filled with whiskey. <laughs> Uh, fan letters came rolling in, including three marriage proposals. At one point in a talk with the press, he jokingly blamed the volcano on the Republicans. <laughs> Someone had to. Yeah. Uh, Governor Dixie Lee Ray said of Truman, quote, Your independence and straightforwardness is a fine example for all of us, particularly senior citizens. When everyone else involved in the Mount St. Helens eruption appeared to be overcome by all the excitement, you stuck to what you know and what common experience, or what, uh, common experience and sense told you. To which Truman replied, damn right. She needs me on her staff. <laughs> See, I just, I kind of envision him in a bathrobe. Like, just a bathrobe and, like, a one of those just raccoon skin caps. Oh, yeah. Like, and that's just, you know, <laughs> what he's wearing. Just living. Just, yeah. He, he pretty much looks like the quintessential, like, jeans, black belt, uh, flannel shirt, glass of whiskey. Okay. You know, uh, Northwesterner, cabin-dwelling, whiskey-drinking, volcano-dying Harry Truman. <laughs> just, just a leathery, leathery guy. Mm-hmm. Sunday, May 18th, 8.32 a.m., Geological Survey uh, volcanologist David Johnston was stationed at an observation post near the North Summit. He excitedly yelled over the radio, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. And it was the last time anyone would ever hear from him. So yeah, he died in the eruption. Oh my goodness. Uh, The summit of the mountain blew off in a mighty explosion. Gas and mud shot up. Ash flew 11 miles into the air. Practically space. Yeah. Within minutes, 156 acres on the northwest side of the mountain was destroyed in massive mudslides traveling 200 miles per hour. Countless forest fires started and were immediately put out by the sheer amount of ash dumping down on them. Uh, Harry Truman's Lodge and all of Spirit Lake was gone. Oh my 
Oh, so God. the mudslides basically just wiped all out everything. Cats. All those all cats the... were gone. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they got the cats out of there. Probably not, though. Yeah. I mean, at that point, but just instant. Just instantly. Yeah. yeah everything's gone. Uh, the mountain stood 1,300 feet shorter than before and had a mile-deep crater open on one side. Uh, heat from mud and ash caused the total river to boil. Highways and bridges surrounding the mountain were destroyed. Uh, eyewitness Lee Harris, who watched the eruption from Auburn, 150 miles north, Goodness. said, quote, I had just started to drive onto the overpass, and there it was. It was almost like a motion picture or, more accurately, a painting. There was such a surreal feel to it all. It was like watching the end of the world come slowly, and you could do nothing but watch. Once drivers noticed all the people watching from the road, sh road shoulder, they pulled over and hardly anyone was moving on the streets in Auburn. Everyone just stared with their mouths open in shock. I was late to work because I just couldn't pull myself away from the sight. You could feel the tension excitement that rolled off everyone. It was so thick in the air that I could almost reach out with my hand and grab a hold of it. I can imagine how silent that was. I was actually on um, I was on San Juan Island uh, when 9-11 happened. And we woke up to it, mm -hmm. and uh, the phone and internet went out, and they shut down the ferry system. Really? It was silent, you know? And we're just, all we had was just watching the news, not knowing what was going to happen. Oh, boy. But, but I can imagine that, because the thing you can see from hundreds of miles, right? So, just the quiet. Yeah. It just, I mean, I'm... What was the sound like? How could could you hear it? Probably not. Not no, from 150 not miles from away, me. but you could see you it could just for sure. See it. See the smoke and ash going up into the air. Well, that would and... make it even. That painting depiction is because it, oh. it's so far away and yeah. so big. It feels, I'm sure, still. It's and then you forget. You think about it. Like we walk among and work with Skookums. people. Oh, sorry. Well, Skookums yeah. as mm -hmm. well. But people who have seen this thing. Yeah. Like how... That explain why I, I, I don't necessarily do too well in, in Auburn, Auburn. I've had a few <laughs> rough shows. I've had some good ones. But why why are these motherfuckers going to laugh? They've seen a volcano. <laughs> They've seen a, mount, a mountain mm -hmm. explode. So me talking about, you know, my, my dead cat. And maybe that's too close to home. Uh, or, uh, you know, my poop jokes aren't going to fly when they've seen the spectacle of God's fury. Yeah. That's, it's that's my it's... new justification. <laughs> that's good. For you bombing should... on stage. That's, oh, yeah, no, that, that works. Yeah. Now. <laughs> exactly. I know why they would find this funny. You saw a volcano. Yeah, it's just nothing to... You know, 37 to, years to ago. That. Well... Uh, a team, or state troopers... Or excuse me, uh... Yeah, state troopers screamed at motorists who had stopped on the side of the road to watch the eruption to get moving, not realizing they were still in danger. So people are driving near Mount St. Helens, stopping on the side of the road, and state troopers are yelling, what the fuck get are you doing? Get yeah. out of here immediately. But it's that you want to see. You want to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder right at what point you're at, at the point of no return, or, you're, or you have that compulsion where you're like, wow, we're this far. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, uh, I well, I took a years ago. I took a photography class, and the very first day, all the teacher basically talked about was safety. And he said, "People have this idea that when they have the camera in their hands, they're invisible, yeah, or they're invincible, and you're not. You know how many photographers have gotten hit by trains? Yeah, a lot. You know how to get by, hit by cars? A lot. So, you know, being an observer does not make you impenetrable to the thing that you're observing. Well, yeah, I mean, selfie death is a thing. Yeah. Oh my. God. <laughs> you know, and and oh, just can you imagine if selfies were a thing at the time of this? Yeah, that that would be. Yeah, hashtag Saint Helen's eruption. Well, just uh, what sort of a hole puts their back against a, a volcano just to get <laughs> yeah. the right the right duck face? I <laughs> I think we both know that I'm that kind of yeah, a hole oh, yeah, that would do sure. that. So. <laughs> 
Uh, a TV cameraman on the scene was caught in the downpour of ash, um, and he narrated as he recorded. And the nar- uh, narration says, quote, The road just exploded in front of me. The whole hill has just disappeared in front of me. I've got ash in my eyes. It's hard to breathe. Oh, dear God, my God, this is hell, hell on earth. Right at this moment, I, honest to God, believe I am dead. And he was rescued 10 hours later by military helicopters. Wow. So he was 10 hours in the heart of the explosion, ash dumping down on him, roads being wiped up by mud flows all around him. What's that guy up to now? Uh, well, he's not laughing at poop jokes, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> or maybe. Maybe he is. Actually, honestly, if these people have seen, you know, such a horrific and tremendous event, maybe my down-to-earth observations about my day-to-day existence could give them comfort. Yeah. You, you should hand what? out a questionnaire after shows. Of... You know what, Auburn? I haven't given up on you. <laughs> no. You hear that, Auburn? <laughs> In fact, my love for you... <laughs> It's just been rekindled. Oh. I'm sorry about the fire reference. It's beautiful here, yeah. <laughs> so he's coming for you, Auburn. Isn't it like a like a lava flow? Like a, like, a, like a rain of ash. Yeah. In your hearts. Yeah. Like a like a beautiful explosion of love <laughs> shooting eleven feet eleven thousand miles into the air. Or 11, and incinerating uh, seventeen cats. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, ash darkened the sky for 500 miles to the east. Seven inches of ash fell on the surrounding areas, shutting down roads, airports, and pretty much everything else. One person said it was like midnight. Uh, 40,000 people were evacuated from Fairchild Air Force Base near Spokane, 300 miles away. Wow. Uh, the amount of material blown off the top of St. Helens was a mile wide, a mile long, and as high as three Empire State Buildings. The blast was the equivalent of 50 million tons of TNT, 2,500 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Wow. 2,500 times more powerful. Oh, my goodness. That is... (sighs) Yeah. Uh, In two days' time, ash had reached Kentucky and Tennessee. Soon after, it hit the eastern seaboard. Uh, 57 people were killed in the eruption, including Harry Truman. I do not know how many cats. 57 people. How many skookums? Oh, maybe, maybe that's uh, why they're not around yeah. anymore. What about the bear bearfish? The bearfish? Well, Spirit Lake was wiped out. It's back now, but it, it was it was wiped out in the in the in the uh, eruption. Uh, Governor Dixie Lee Ray flew over the destruction site and said, "Quote: I feel like I've just come back from the moon." To give a sense of the enormity, a reporter for the Everett Herald made the comparison to if the mountain had erupted at the site of the kingdom just south of downtown Seattle. Uh, And if that happened, uh, he said, quote, It would have, in moments, devastated with heat, ash, concussion, and mud all of downtown Seattle, north Seattle, shoreline, and beyond as far as Edmond, some 20 miles to the north. The devastation would have crossed Puget Sound, smashed the northern third of Bainbridge Island, and sent two huge mud flows crashing as far as Hood Canal. Renton would have been inundated with mud. Kirkland and Bellevue would have been destroyed. The western shore of Lake Sammamish would have been devastated, and the lake itself would have been buried under a thick ash that would have extended across the Cascade foothills to cover Skykomish and Index before continuing into eastern Washington and beyond. Wow. Like that it's, yeah, Renton would have been destroyed in an instant, as would Kirkland and Bellevue. That is an enormous, enormous swath yeah, of land. that is... You know, I do. I do think about volcanoes out here, all, all you know, all the time. In fact, one of my my first uh, jokes that I remember really got any any laughs was when uh, years ago when there was a, a a a little steam vent that happened. You know, there was a little bit of activity and, and people were talking about, it and everybody was telling volcano jokes at open <laughs> mics. You know, <laughs> like oh. <coughs> Good thing I'm not a virgin, you know, and all that oh, stuff. Oh, super, super fun open mic. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. hot takes. Yeah, here's the thing in the news today. Let me talk about my own but, sex life. But, you know, it was like my, you know, mine was, you know, I'm actually pretty, pretty excited uh, about about the volcanic activity because, you know, it's probably the re- reawakening of the atomic super beast. And uh, one of the reasons I moved to Seattle was to see the Space Needle 
uh, you know, come alive and, and defend the city. Mm. And that was that was my big hot joke. And I was very, and it got laughs. It was one of the first times, actually, because I was pretty bad when I started. And, uh, and I remember just that joke would kill, and it killed for two weeks. And then people stopped caring about caring about the volcano <laughs> nobody cares about the volcano <laughs> anymore yeah, it's there but did it kill an, did it work in auburn yeah you know i wasn't i wasn't invited to auburn no. good you hadn't yet. broke into that, <laughs> that in high quality the, last auburn comedy the, scene uh, that uh, hot auburn market mm-hmm. yeah. uh the cleanup process began water was rationed because so much of it was needed to hose down buildings and streets uh, ash was cleaned, then wind blew it back into the cleaned area. Because oh. it's just, it's this fine ash. Yeah. It's just a nightmare to clean up. Uh, rain turned it into mud, and machines were clogged and gunked up with it. Ash got into car motors and created problems. Uh, residents of Washington tried to mail ash to friends and relatives elsewhere as a souvenir, but the baggies they put them in broke in the mail and damaged mail sorting machines. Whoa! <laughs> just enough of it happened that a bunch of mail sorting machines got ruined by trying to mail ash to people. Yeah, they're they putting in little little plastic baggies. Then <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Uh, May twenty first, President Jimmy Carter came to the scene. He asked the governor what she needed to help the situation, and she responded M O N E Y. <laughs> spelled it out for she him. She spelled it out. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think that she sang it a little bit. A little, just, just a little sassy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, she was a, she was a scientist. She, uh, she went from science into politics. Oh. And, uh, so she knew, she understood all of this, everything that was happening yeah. and what needed to be done. Um, the eruption did over $3 billion in damages. That's in 1980 money. Yeah. Uh, the eruption created a natural mud dam and Spirit Lake is now 200 feet deeper than it was before the eruption. However, so the surrounding forest was destroyed. And now the entire lake is filled with uh, fallen trees that were destroyed in the fire. Oh, boy. Uh, Harry Truman is now remembered as a folk hero. Songs have been written about him, and his interviews are intertwined with many people's memories of the St. Helens eruption. Harry Truman's friend and former employee, Mark Smith, said, quote, He always wanted to be buried in that place. If he died of natural causes, he might have been buried in a cemetery. He didn't want to leave his lodge for anyone. That's the way he wanted it, and that's the way he got it. Mount St. Helens now stands at 8,363 feet and is still considered an active volcano. It's kind of uh, that Harry Truman story that's kind of a, a more somber version of Up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you can still do the heartfelt montage and then just fire that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first 10 minutes of Up without the, the late last 80 minutes. Of well, up. the last 80 minutes would be a real chilling... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, that's a different direction for that story. It's originally where they wanted to go. Yeah, I'm like okay, less volcano, more balloons. <laughs> yeah, they they did write in a Boy Scout dying with him, but they changed it later <laughs> yeah. on to them. Just a Boy Scout that taught him how to love again. Yeah, you know? opened his heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, that movie. <laughs> Beautiful. Also uh, based off of the woman in Ballard. Yeah, the, yeah. the Macefield. Edith yeah. Macefield, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I... Let's see, I was born in 1978, so that happened in 1980. Yes. Um, I vaguely remember, as a kid, my d- dad talking about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, there was still some sort of... Uh, stigma of 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 that huge event you know Mm -hmm. six years later four or five six years later but what are your memories of of this i don't i mean i was i wasn't born yet when it happened i was born in 82 Uh, my sister was born when it was happening okay uh which was a a great concern for the family because like if if you know if it erupts and the wind is blowing to the north because that was a big concern is which way is the wind going to be blowing when it happened and it was blowing to the east so it all kind of got pushed out to the east um and but the concern is if it was blowing to the north they would have gotten basically ashed in like snowed in yeah. i guess and they wouldn't have been able to uh, uh get to the doctor wouldn't be able to get to the hospital and there were all these concerns uh about about what was going to happen and everybody in western washington was very very anxious because nobody knew nobody knew exactly what this eruption was going to end up looking like oh boy 
I believe uh, my grandparents lived in uh, Centralia at the time, which is much closer. Yes. And they got hit with a lot of ash. They got ashed pretty hard. It's kind of yeah. interesting if you think about it because it's, it's – it's such a huge event, and that's only you know. Also, you know, it's a significant geologic event. All of that, and it happened what thirty thirty seven years ago. Thirty seven years ago, and I bet there's people living in this town that don't quite realize, don't know, you know, don't know that just, it happened. It's just, yeah, it's just out out of their radar. Oh, I'm sure. Think about it. I'm sure. Know? Yeah, I'm sure that there's people in there, you know. Early mid twenties, right now, that are adults living their living their lives that have probably never maybe have heard about St. Helens or kind of knew it erupted, but yeah. had no idea how big of a deal it was. And and there are if 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 we get another volcano, I mean, Renton is gone. You know, I think various ones, depending on like the Lahore that will could happen. Yeah. There's, there's huge... Well, if Rainier goes yeah, up, we're that's... all we're all fucked. Uh, I, I climbed Mount Rainier a couple of years ago, and at the top, there's steam vents that are hot yes. to the touch when you touch them, and that kind of freaked me out of, oh, yeah, this is, a, this is a giant active volcano surrounded by people on all sides. It's kind of just sort of hopeful, you know, because there's so many... <sighs> we have so many horrible ways to die right now. Violence... It, uh, others' hands, uh, you know, uh, lack of health care, just uh, consequences of, of, of man's actions. Mm-hmm. But in the scheme of things, you know, maybe we will have that chance to Truman out, you know. Yeah, to, to die in a to, volcano. To, to, to burn to death in a place you love, surrounded by memories of, of love. And that's what I hope for you, Chris. I hope that when you're in your 80s, you're a celebrated son of a bitch. And you and your whiskey and your cats, and you drown in a lake of ash and fire. That's my hope for you. Well, thank you for listening to the Seattle Files. Uh, thank you so much, Emmett, for being here. Uh, if you like the show, subscribe and rate in iTunes. If you have a topic suggestion you would like to hear an episode about, shoot me an email at the Seattle Files at gmail.com. And to support the Seattle Files, go to patreon.com slash the Seattle Files. Thank you for listening. Be back next week with a new topic. 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 Back next week with a new topic.